Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we have got this sucker up and running. And, <laughs> great success. <laughs> so, I finally got a proper power supply for this sucker. It is 5 volts, 60 amps. We're talking 300 watts of power. Right now, with the amount of electrolyte I have in the cell, it's conducting 40 amps. So this thing is really cranking. And you can see when I flip her on. Look at that gas volume. That is crazy. It's gassier than me on Taco Tuesday. So I originally, let me shut that down for a minute. Fan's a little noisy. So <laughs> not sure the wife will be pleased, but I, <laughs> I originally tried using the cord from her <laughs> uh, hair straightener, thinking, you know, good copper conductor. As some of you guys noticed, in my initial attempt I was using speaker wire, I didn't realize that was just cheap aluminum wire, and it, it, it was getting hot as hell, it wasn't conducting enough current at all. So I had tried switching to this copper wire, figuring, you know, it's powering probably a 800 watt straightener, which obviously way more current than this sucker's taking but the problem is it is DC which isn't as gentle on, uh, on conductors and it's also really I mean it's it's not carrying that kind of current because it's stepping down or just sending it direct to the heating cartridges so unfortunately this was a fail and it still delivered a lot more current than the speaker wire I was getting like 26 amps but I ran out to the home of the Sombrero Showdown, picked up some 10 gauge conductor here, and now we are in freaking business. It really doesn't even heat up at all. The, the spot I'm kind of worried about is the connection here. So I got some of these uh, terminal posts, and it's the interface between the stainless steel all thread, the nut, and the terminal where, where we're getting heat now. So that's probably the limiting factor and also what's going to limit runtime on the cell because this will probably get up to the point where it'll melt the PVC and I do not want that to happen because then we'll you know we'll have to start with a fresh cap which is a pain in the ass but check this sucker out get her running throw my safety goggles on much much more intense flame right through an aluminum can. No problemo. Got a nice slice there. I've already been screwing around with the stainless cup and it is also able to burn a hole in the stainless without issue. Hot as balls. So, that was the one we just did there. Nice little slice through it. So we are in business, guys. We got a wicked HHO torch here. So I do have a few pretty cool experiments lined up for. The Whoa, hello. Another, another scar on the mat. So I do have a few experiments set up that I kind of built this in mind for. And one of them, I, I actually want to try melting aluminum oxide to form synthetic ruby. Not sure if that'll really work, but I think it's worth a try. See if we can do it. But man, is this thing fun. Wicked hot flame. Crazy how fast it's burning through the stainless. But wanted to get you guys that update, and we're gonna be doing some pretty cool projects with this sucker. Oh yeah, look, our PVC's melting. Shut her down. It never freaking ends. Every time I get this thing up and going, it's another issue. Wow. So the problem there is it started getting hot, softened the PVC, and that made the contact worse, which increased resistance and you can actually see the difference in terminal color there. 
So we, we really heated that sucker way too much. Now what I've been doing to prevent flashbacks in, in the nozzle here is just breaking off a little steel wool. This should be stainless steel wool, but it's, it's what I got. So just kind of shove it in there like that. And I'll just snip the ends off there. So another thing I did, I went on to uh, dipped into the Patreon account a little bit. Thank you very much to the Patreons who support this channel. Um, and got some 21 gauge blunt tip needles. Now, quite a few of you guys noticed on the last video that the needle tips were essentially turning into thermal lances. And originally they were, they were actually sharp tip needles that I just ground uh, square on the bench grinder. And I think what was occurring there, one, we definitely did have a thermal lance situation, but because it had those sharp angles there and probably some microscopic burrs, little bits of it were able to grab that oxygen, react with it, and start a chain reaction. These blunt tips, where it's a nice rounded uh, kind of microscopic edge there, don't seem to have that problem. Now I also have a lot more gas going through, which is probably helping to cool the needle and keep it from going into that thermal lance situation. So let's see what she can actually do now. All the free cancer are floating in the air. Beautiful. Oh, we had a little, <laughs> a brief moment of an aluminum fire. So we should be clear through the can. Look at that. <laughs> clear through with freaking water as our, you know, uh, our starting, uh, I don't want to say fuel because then you start getting into that fringy sort of, <laughs> that whole group of people that I'm not trying to become part of. <laughs> by splitting water. Effectively what we're doing, we're taking the power from here, we're losing about 50% efficiency, and then we're putting the power all at a tiny little flame tip. Uh, that's really what we're doing. Uh, you know, you're not, you're, you're splitting water, so, I mean, you could say, yeah, you're cutting metal with water, but <laughs> water jets do that every day. Um, the, you know, it's not very efficient, but it is a cool little torch, and I'm definitely going to have some cool uses for this thing. Uh, one of the things I want to do coming up is actually make some aluminum oxide, and then mix in a little bit of chromium oxide, and try to make synthetic ruby. So, I think that'll be a fun little project. This is just to try out, and that way I can add ruby to the periodic table to kind of represent aluminum because let's be honest everyone has aluminum not that exciting but ruby that you made that'd be pretty cool to add to the periodic table so here we got a piece of uh well take electrode blue which i think is the uh lanthanated you know or thorated or one of them so we'll plop that in the, the vice grips here fire the cell up and see if our flame temperature ain't hot enough to melt just the tip. Got steady hands like Michael J. Fox. And I don't think we got enough to do the tungsten. Seems to be conducting the heat away a little too quickly for it to really get the tip melted. It might have just slightly blunted the tip, but yeah, not enough though. Not enough to get her to melt. We are defeated by tungsten. So guys, let me know what you think the uh, next project I do with this is. I do have some chromium oxide on order, so I'm going to be trying to make synthetic ruby. But if you have any other ideas, let me hear them. Because I think we can do some fun stuff on probably a small scale. Oh shit. My cell is literally smoking. Time to turn her down. So another thing I think 
it might be worthwhile to install some sort of heat sink up at the top here to help prevent this on Gen 2 because this is becoming a recurring theme. Alright guys, well thank you so much for watching. Again, please let me know some, some of your ideas as to what we can do with this sucker. As I mentioned, I'm going to be trying to make synthetic ruby with it, but I'm sure there's tons of other projects we could do, so just you know, drop a comment and we'll see if we can make it happen. Uh, please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and if you like what we're doing here, please consider donating in the page on Patreon so we can keep these videos rolling and you know keep the good times coming. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take it easy, guys.